cheese was a little cold, and that's the thing about mac and cheese. It has to be warm when you when you get it to the table because of Good morning. Mal Williams here. Marathon Mondays with Mal, episode number two. Thank you to, for coming back and checking us out. We're going to walk by the uh, wall of customers as we head on upstairs. It's kind of a cool wall. It shows a lot of uh, previous owners are of some sort of celebrity. We're going to head on upstairs here in the lobby at the Coburg location. Last week in the cabinet shop, Marathon Mondays was... Uh, hanging out with Mike in the cabinet shop last week. And if you still have comments about that, feel free to comment or check YouTube, Twitter, and the Marathon Facebook. That's a good spot to go check out last week's episode. This week's episode is pretty exciting. Al Christensen, our designer, he is our interior designer. And Al has been with the company since 1983. And we're gonna head on into the interior design department and see what he's up to. Let's check it out. All right, here we go. Hey, Al. Hey, man. How are you today? Good. Well, you so brought, you brought uh, company. I brought company. Good Al, to see you. Good to see you. Al Christensen, everybody. He is our interior design guy here at Marathon. Al, before we get started and talk of talking about, I know you're working right now on uh, 1269. I am. Which is a spec coach, not yep. not a customer coach. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So tell us a little bit about your experience working for Marathon over well, the years. Uh, I have the distinction of being Marathon's first employee. Uh, oh, wow. So from the get-go, uh, I've been involved with design uh amongst other folks, but uh, I've been involved with it from day one. So uh, kind of involved, uh, evolved into uh, where we are today. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So you started in what year? Was it 83? 83, okay. yes. So yep. you've seen a lot of changes over the oh, years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In design changes, it's like a, a big wheel. Uh, it slowly changes and things, uh, technology gives you new, different uh, products to use. And I, I would say, of anything, that, that inspires more creativity. Uh, the new patterns in that, uh, where stone was usually primarily the, the thing we used back then. Uh, now porcelains, the, the photo reproduction or the reproduction of porcelains is really uh, advanced from where it was, even tell porcelain between the actual stone. Uh, the advantages of porcelain is you, you know what you're getting because uh, it's consistent. Stone, you may have to order heavy because depending on how active it is and that, you may get something different than what you thought you bought for from sure. the sample. So Absolutely. Um, so before we talk about 1269, which is what you've been working on, uh -huh. uh, can you show us the room over here? Sure. I know it's one of my favorite rooms to look okay. at. Uh, when when customers come in for a tour, uh -huh. this is a great room. You've got where you and Brenda sit in here and do a lot of the design work. Yeah. And then you've got this room. Tell us tell us what this room is used for. Uh, this is the interior design uh, conference room or engineering conference room. This is where we would meet a customer along with the sales representative uh, to go over the things they wanted in their coach okay. and the floor plan, they uh, dial in any drawer sizes or uh, special thing, special requests, maybe in the bay and that, so you get it all written down here. Uh, we also involve the exterior paint, so uh, you want things done concurrently. We want to make the experience of designing your own coach uh, a good experience, relaxing experience, and a fun experience, and not uh, just details upon details and arduous uh, process. So uh, a lot of the things we do are done concurrently, like Pete can do the exterior paint, go back and work on it while we're working on the interior. Same for the engineering department, they can dial in the floor plan sure. um, and get that done concurrently while we're working on the interior. One thing I've noticed about these two rooms where you and Brenda work uh -huh. is it's very um, 
it, it plays very much into the creativity, whether it's for your benefit, Brenda's benefit, or when the customers come in, there's a lot of text and a lot of fabrics to touch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I see, I mean, even this table mm -hmm. uh, is, is textured. Yeah. So um, I'm sure you've got customers that have come in and it took two hours. Uh, some have been like two hours. <laughs> and uh, some have been two weeks. Two weeks, and some have uh, went even longer than that, which isn't good for production because uh, everybody's waiting on answers and we got a sequence we need to uh, follow or correspond to. So, absolutely, uh, but it's a very personal thing. Yeah, for, absolutely. For the yeah, and we know the things that if they're just totally undecided on something, we know when the final time we'll, we'll need a decision made. So a lot of things can we can work on to get exactly what the customer's looking for or happy with. Right on. Yeah. Well, let's go check out 1269. Sure. sure. I know you, we, when you and I talked last uh, Friday uh -huh. and earlier this morning, um, you were working on 1269. Yes. And so this is a spec unit. Uh-huh. Um, where, where do you start? It, this is not something that a customer came in and had their concept. Correct. This, is, this concept came from your mind. Yes. Tell us where you start with that. Well, um, I kind of look at designing a coach like a, a kind of an unchartered journey. Um, when I start with something, either it could be a fabric, it could be a textile, any textile that has some interest. Uh, this particular one, I started more with color, uh, and that's with the laminates. I blended laminates. So you started with this piece? Yes. With yeah. this single piece? Yes. That's great. Yep. And then I worked on a wall laminate that corresponds with that. Uh, then I'll start placing pieces together from that, and, and eventually it's going to uh, have an identity. Um, an interior has to be harmonious. and. Uh, you got to have just the right amount of detail and not too much. Um, you got to know when to stop with it. Uh, too much activity can, you can be restless, too many things, and everybody has different tolerances for the amount of uh, busyness? Variation, variation, okay. variation or busyness, yes. And so uh, we try to be very harmonious. Uh, so when you go in this coach, you feel relaxed. Everything needs to fit and be in place. I would say it's a lot like uh, an orchestra when they're warming up and everybody's playing their each instrument. It's <laughs> it's it sounds like absolutely confusion and nothing makes sense. But when the conductor starts putting them together, putting them together, it comes out as beautiful music, and that's what you want an interior to do. Um, wow, that's a great way to illustrate. A, a lot of things, you know, as as they start, I'll lay them out. And then I want, I'm a texture guy, I like a lot of, some texture, not all texture, but just the right amount um, to yeah. give it interest. And uh, there's always something that, uh, when somebody walks in the coach, I want them to look at it as a work of art, like a piece, and not, not oh, this looks just like the last one. Right. And that's what kind of drove this is because I listed the coaches that we had with the same floor plan, and I looked at the colors and the feel, the style uh, of it, and I want to do something different. Gotcha. So that, we don't have any light laminates, most of them are the darker laminates, so I went with a light to give a different feel, and now I'm just kind of placing elements that could potentially work with it, and then I'll tie it up. So it's like a, Uncharted journey. I don't know exactly where this is going to end up, but I'll know when I get there. That's so great. Yeah. And these textiles are sourced from all over. Is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Yeah. And we do a lot of searching. Uh, we'll go to tile stores, uh, you know, different. We want something different. We don't want to stay just with the same all the time. Sure. We, we want each coach to be looked at individually because everybody's got different tastes. Yeah. Uh, it's not. Not everybody wants just vanilla ice cream, so uh, we try to give a nice variety to expand on the amount of folks that would be potential buyers. Sure. Absolutely. So talking about you know design, you know it's like uh, 
every designer has their own mm -hmm. icon, or each designer <laughs> has their own. I know where you're going. You know where I'm going with this. John <laughs> Lasseter, he doesn't show up to work without a Hawaiian shirt yeah, on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Al Christensen, what is it that you do in every coach that makes it kind of your own? I've heard a, well, I've heard a little story about yeah, this. Yeah. Well, it, it's kind of uh, developed uh, unintentionally uh, with elephants. And one, I, I just, when I go out and do accessory shopping, I try to find interesting things. I try to, whatever stops me when I'm walking through the aisles, Right. that's what I want people to do. And so I want things to, I want surprises. Every time you walk through a coach, I want people to look at every little detail and see that's interesting. So elephants, I've, I've been kind of drawn to mainly because the artisans that make them are so creative yes. in how they do them. They have different styles. Some are contemporary, some are uh, traditional and uh, artifact looking. Uh, so they've always kind of drawn my interest. So unintentionally, I... I've just been drawn, and who doesn't like an elephant? Yeah, and well, and you mentioned earlier that it has mm -hmm. something to do with luck. Well, there is a, a, a lot of people believe that uh, an elephant placed in a coach or at the, at, towards the door, uh, everybody who enters will be, uh, uh, favorable things will happen. So uh, <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, so uh, that's kind of an interesting aspect of it too, but it got to be kind of a, a thing that everybody was looking where I put the elephants. So I try to find uh, different ones that uh, are a little more obscure. Uh, got customers that look at the calendar and try to find the elephant, you know. So it's gotten to be kind of a little game kind of thing uh, unintentionally. So right. that's kind of... Someone, someone had mentioned earlier that you had integrated a uh, Dr. Seuss uh, elephant. Yeah, uh, that was in a, a coach a family's coach that had several kids and I included some videos, uh, children videos in the coach and the accessories. And one of them was Horton and that was the elephant. Uh, that one people had trouble finding. Uh, there was another one I put it on a finial of a lamp, a uh, little oh, lamp yeah. in our paint department. Andy, who does the exterior paint, painted it actually to match the Empador Dark, oh, no kidding. which is this right here. He painted it to match that with veins in it, and that it was a tiny little elephant. But uh, yeah, it's been kind of a, a game, kind of unintentional. Well, oh, that's really neat. But uh, yeah, I kind of, I seem to always be drawn to them because they're interesting to me. Absolutely. Yeah. That's so great. Well, Al, thank you so much for your time. It's Absolutely. been great. Absolutely. My pleasure. This is really neat. I'm sure that we're going to get a lot of comments uh, on, on this video and people asking questions. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'll make sure I re uh, refer back to you on those questions. That'd be great. Um, and then most likely over the coming weeks, we'll come back to see uh, what you can do. Uh, do you have a question, Mickey? We do. We actually have a couple. So first of all, I want us to um, welcome Lee. He's actually been here, and he's watching the video. So he's hey, Lee. Hi, Lee. <laughs> you probably Hi, know Lee. Lee. <laughs> Hi, Lee. And then um, Matt would like to know, have you designed outside furniture to match the coach that goes along with the coach? Oh, ah, that's a great question. That is a good question. Uh, not really. Usually the, the Zipti chairs are used uh, primarily for the exterior. Uh, we have some collapsible tables that we've done. Uh, with coach laminate and things like that. Some that pull out that are fixed, some that are loose. Sure. So, uh, yeah, but not too much in the chair uh, end of it and that or lounge chairs. But that's definitely something we probably could do, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If someone yep. came in and had they, they had their fabrics and they wanted their patio side sure, to match. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, how cool. Yeah. Elephants on the patio. <laughs> <laughs> there's Come, a lot coming of, next week. There's a lot of cool elephants exterior. <laughs> and then Matt would also like to know, have you ever tried to design a coach with federal or Victorian influences? Oh. Um, we've touched on that uh, a little bit. Not, not a lot. Most of, the, most of the ones we've done are kind of uh, transitional, I would say. Uh, a little bit European. We have done some uh, raised panel and... Uh, things like that, an all wood coach. We've done those, but uh, the for the most part, the laminate kind of a con semi contemporary. I would call it traditional with uh, or 
excuse me, transitional with some traditional elements, but not, not truly a Victorian uh, style. Wonderful. Uh, we could do it for him. <laughs> we definitely could. That'd be fun. I know my mom's watching and she would love the Victoria. Any of these questions that you guys have, throw them at us while we're doing it live. And if we can answer them, we will. So Fantastic. this has been great. I think we'll probably in the next uh, couple of months have to come back on a Monday and talk to you about um, a customer's mm -hmm. uh, coach okay. that they that they came in and brought their concept and you helped them out with. Absolutely. That's great. That, Al, thank you so much. Absolutely. My this pleasure. This has been fun. My pleasure. Let's, let's head on downstairs. Thanks for your time. We'll see yeah, you later, absolutely. Al. Okay. Let's head on downstairs and talk about next week. We might talk about you after we leave. <laughs> I'll have to read the... Uh... Read the comments. Yeah. <laughs> what a great guy. It's really neat to have the ability to walk right down the hallway and talk to Al Christensen, who's been here for over 25 years, and think about all the experience, all of the coaches that that guy has either helped on or designed, been the principal designer on. It's wonderful. I integrated the word wonderful again. How, how did that happen? Well, let's talk about next week as we head on down to the production floor. We're going to head over to this coach in the showroom. Next week on Marathon Mondays with Mal, we're going to be out on the road. We're going to take it out, and uh, we are going to check the Prevo chassis drivability and the safety. A lot of you who are marathon owners or fans or Prevo owners and fans, you know about the importance of the safety and you know about the incredible drivability of the Prevo chassis. And that's what we're gonna talk about next Monday on Marathon Mondays with Mal. We're gonna have Dave Bash out on the road with us talking about Prevo. So for Pete, Mickey, and James, I'm Mal. We'll see you next Monday.